Greetings and welcome to part 3 of the Godot beginner tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be taking a look at how to create projectiles that our player can throw at the enemy characters. Let's get right into it. To start off with, create a new 2D scene, change the type of the node 2D into an area 2D and then you can rename your area 2D into whatever you like to call it as. I'm going to be creating throwing axes in this episode, so I'm going to call it an axe. Next up, we are going to have to save it and then add in two children to the X. One of them is a collision shape and the other one is a sprite. Now add in whatever texture that you have prepared beforehand into the sprite's texture property. I am going to be using this axe that I found online in itch.io. I am also going to be scaling it down a lot so that it actually fits in with the game. The sprite that I downloaded is quite a bit large for this game, so I'm going to be resizing it according to the player. So I found a scale value of 0.1 on both X and Y to be suitable for my game. Next up, I'm going to be re-importing it with a 2D pixel preset. So what this does is actually make your sprite more pixelated so that it actually fits in with the world. The sprite I downloaded is not a pixel sprite, so I'm going to be using the 2D pixel preset to get it a bit more pixelated, the edges become a bit more jarry. I'm going to add in a shape for the collision shape. I'm going to be using a circle shape, you can use whichever one that suits your projectile. Most developers use a capsule shape, however I'm going to be using a circle. Next up, it's time to add in a script to your axe. Save it into the scripts folder and then erase off everything that comes off by default and start off by writing a new variable. The variable is going to be called speed and just as you've guessed, it's going to be the speed for your axe. I'm going to give it something low around like 300 so that I, so that you can actually see the axe. It's actually a throwing axe so it's not going to go as fast as a bullet. Next up, you're going to have to write down in physics process. You'll have to note down that the bullet that we are creating or the axe that we are creating is only going to go either to the left or to the right depending upon where the player is facing. So let's go ahead and write down function physics process delta position dot x plus equals speed times delta. Once you're finished with typing, let's go and try it out. To do so, I'm going to be appending an axe instance into the world.tsa. So let's try it out and see if it works properly. As you can see, the axe just flew by. So let's actually add in some extra features to the axe. To do so, let's go back to the axe script and in there I'm going to be writing down a method to actually harm the spider enemy. To do so we are going to be referring to both the axe and a spider in groups. To create a group on the right side of the editor select node and select groups and write down the name of a group and click on add. For the axe I'm going to be adding in a group called axe and for the enemy I'm going to be adding in a group called enemy. Adding in scenes into groups like this will help you to refer to them while programming. So you could have groups for enemies, groups for bullets, groups for platforms, etc. Now let's connect the body and dirt signal of the axe into the axe script. In here, you are going to be able to refer to the spider object and kill it. So let's write down if body dot is in group enemy, then body dot remove. You'll notice that I wrote down body.die, but that is not the function that we are going to be calling. You can call in any function that is similar to the remove function that we created for the spider enemy. I wrote down body.die in here because I got confused with another game that I was creating for the Godot game jam. So let's actually test out and see if it's working. To do so, before we run the game, let's move the spider off to the right a bit and move down the axe so that it gets a bit of space to fly. And when we run the game, we must notice that the axe does fly out to the right and kill the spider. That's pretty much all there is to killing the spider. So let's now go ahead and make the player actually throw the axe instead of just spawning it into the world. To do so, we'll be going over into the player script and in the player script, we'll be writing a new variable. So till now, we wrote down already var to refer to objects in our scene tree. Similarly, we are going to be creating a new variable which is a type of a preload variable. A preload variable helps you to load in stuff or information before the game actually loads in. Kind of like a loading screen but without one. 
So let's create a new variable called x which is going to preload and refer to the scene path or object path in your file directory so as scenes x.tsen. This preload variable is what's going to be helping you to instance an x element every time you press the shoot button. To do so, let's go to project, project settings, input map and add in a new shoot key. I'm going to be using the left mouse button. In case you had already done that, write down the name in the actions bar, press hit and then assign a mouse button or a key. Next up, let's go back to the code and write down if input.is action just pressed shoot or new x equals x.instance. So this is a variable that holds the information for the newly preloaded x instance. So next up, we actually have to give in the information for the position where we want the x to instance in it. To do so, give a new child to the player called position2d. A position2d is basically an object that has the capacity to hold a value of vector2 or x and y and helps us to refer to this x and y value through code so that we can refer to a position in our game or in our editor. So let's go back up to the, our variables collection and create a new already variable called throw hand which is going to be referring to position 2d. Now that you have created a reference variable, let's go back down to if input is action just press shoot and write down x.position equals throw hand dot position. However, instead of x.position, you should write down a new x dot position. Below that, write down get tree which refers to the current scene tree dot current scene which obviously refers to the current scene that's being played dot add child which is a function that creates a child to the scene tree and in the brackets for the add child write down new x so when you try it out you are actually going to get an error message if you wrote down x dot position instead of new x dot position even when you actually type down even when you actually type down new x dot position instead of x dot position you are still going to get this artifact the axes are being spawned in at the top. So what's going on in here? The issue is that you're instancing the axis at the local position of the position 2D. The local position is the position that you see on screen right now. However, you should be instancing them at the global position of position 2D, which is the position that moves along with the player. So what's there to change you ask? In the player script, go down to if input is action just pressed shoot, Below that, new x dot position equals throw hand dot position. Change it into throw hand dot global position. Now, when you actually run the game, you'll see that the axes are indeed being spawned where you want them to be spawned at. And now, when you try shooting at the enemy, the enemy does indeed get killed. However, you would notice that the axe is flying off into the distance. However, we don't want that. We want the axe to stop and then get destroyed along with the enemy. So what do we do? Let's go back to the axis script and in the axis script you're going to write down Q3. However, we are going to be changing this in a little bit because right now when you call Q3 along with killing the enemy, the enemy is not going to get what killed the enemy in the first place because if you remember in the last episode we placed a little timer before killing off the enemy. So in the end, the enemy won't get what killed it and the game is going to freak out just like how you see here. There's a quick fix to this actually. So let's remove Q3 and replace it with remove. Remove is going to be a new function that we are going to be defining now. So let's write down func remove. In remove, we are going to create a new timer by using yield get tree dot create timer. We are going to be giving it something like 0.5 and then write down timeout. And below that, we are going to write down Q3. So we'll give it a little bit of time before it is actually removed from the scene so that the game does not freak out by not being able to detect what killed the enemy. Now when you test out the game, you'll be able to play it without any issues arising. Next up, we are going to be making the axe actually stop when it hits the enemy. And to make the axe actually stop, we are going to go into the axe script and write down below body.remove speed equals zero. We'll be setting the speed value to zero so we are going to have to reset it back to 300 by giving a new function called ready which runs every time the scene is ready so write down in there speed equals 300 we are calling in the ready function because in case you did not do that the first axe that actually shoots is going to get a velocity or a speed of 300 however any other axis that is one later on will not 
because you have already set the value of the speed into zero. So if your axes are not moving, that is probably the culprit. So next up, we are going to be setting the position of the axe to the position of the spider enemy so that it sticks to the enemy like how an axe is supposed to stick if it gets hit on something. So with all those lines of code in, when you play the game, you'll see that the axe stops moving and it sticks to the enemy character. So next up, let's make the axe actually rotate in the air as if it would if you actually threw a real axe. However, I do not recommend you go around throwing axes. To do so, there's actually two ways. The first one is to record. The second one is to create an animation and play it in the ready function. To do so by code, in physics process, write down rotate deck to rad and 15. Deck to add stands for degrees to radians. Radians is what Godot uses instead of degrees. So now when you actually just start the game, there's a high chance you'll encounter this piece of shit. To fix that, let's go out to the axis script and create a new variable called rotation speed. This is going to be set to 15. In case you can't already tell, this is going to be the substitute for the value that we gave to deck to add. So over in function ready, make sure we write down rotation speed equals 15 because in the function on axe body ender, we'll be setting it to zero. Of course we are not in it. The problem that we have encountered is that the axe keeps on rotating and moving even though we have actually hit an enemy. So to fix this, we are going to be creating a new variable called movable which is set to true by default, but in on axe body ender, we are going to be setting it into false. Now over in physics process, we are going to be writing down if movable equals equals true, then we are going to be setting the position dot x as well as the rotate degree as the children or as an intended part of if movable equals equals true. So what you're about to see right now is something that I recorded earlier but then I messed up and lost the original recording. I'm going to be teaching you how to create a health function for your character. So over in global, create a new global variable called player health and set it to 3 or whatever you like it to. And in the function on her box area ender for the player, check if global.playerHealth is less than or equal to 0. If it is, call a function called die. And in the die function, you're going to get 3.reloadCurrentScene which will the current scene which is what you do usually when your character dies. So over into the spiders function on hitbox L area ended or hitbox R area ended, we are going to subtract from health 1. And that pretty much covers everything there is for the Godot beginner platformer tutorial series as third part. I'm going to be coming up with new tutorials soon enough so don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And until then, goodbye.